Hello, Herricks. It's not Friday, but it's still a great day to cover Highlander sports in this Herrick Expanded Sports Update. I'm Michael Grady. And I'm Addison Gonzalez. First, we're starting off with varsity football, who have a record of 0-6. It's been a rough go-around so far for the Highlanders, as they've only scored over 10 points once this season. Their season comes to a close soon with their last game on homecoming against an also winless opponent, Roslyn. That Roslyn game should be manageable for them, but the rest of their schedule has been a gauntlet. Herricks has had to compete with tough teams such as Calhoun and Belmore JFK and a machine of a program in Garden City. Last week, they suffered another lopesided loss against Southside, and right now it's hard to say if they'll win at least a game. Let's hope they win at least that Roslyn game at homecoming in the final few weeks. And now we'll hear from Alexander Broski, who's standing by with right guard Alex Cabrera. Hi, I'm here with Alex Cabrera from the Herricks varsity football team. So tell me, Alex, you guys have struggled as of late. What can you do to help turn the team around? I think personally, it's um, it's a big thing on execution and getting my blocks done quickly, as well as holding my block for the entire play, as well as putting in um that extra uh, hundred ten percent just to just to make sure if the ball goes the other way, I'm still able to block it then too. Last game against New Hyde Park was another tough one. What do you think went wrong? On on offense, I think our one of our biggest issues was either not uh, holding our blocks for a long enough time or the defensive line from the other team would just scrape across and be quick enough to catch up to our running back. And on when we were on the defensive plays, we're, um, we're not able to handle the counters very well. So if they push to the outside, they were able to get past most of the times. What strengths do you think the team has as we transition into Saturday's game? On Saturday, I think our biggest strength is we're returning back to um, our base plays and and sticking to what we practiced through all over the, uh, the summer. And then I think it's also because we have a uh, we just want to really win a game at this point, at least. We're just sick of losing. How are you going to get ready for this upcoming game at Southside? I am practicing on my uh, get-offs, as well as my response to other players' movements, and working on my hand-eye coordination when I watch for the running back or the quarterback to run the ball. That was Alex Cabrera, varsity lineman. Thank you for your time, Alex. Now back to you. Hopefully the Highlanders close out their season with a strong finish. And now let's bring it over to Ricky Dos Santos for news on how the JV Highlander team is doing. This is Herrick's Junior Varsity Football. JV football practices every day after school from 3 to 5 p.m., always training hard for their next game. Their team consists of freshmen and sophomores, leaving them to learn from the varsity team. To gain more insight on the team, we spoke to one of our team captains on the JV team. Who are you? My name is Arnold Sharma. I play middle linebacker and I'm a sophomore. And why did you choose to play for the football team this year? Because I just like playing physical sports a lot. What do you think your team's biggest weakness is and what you can do to help improve that? Our team's biggest weakness is tackling. And we could just go live. We like usually go live and practice, tackling each other, helping our like form. Arian serves as one of the key defenders for the JV team. And what do you do to stay in shape during the off season? We have this thing called Harris off season practice, where we go into the weight room during the summer. We go through offensive and defensive plays. How do you balance your school and sports life every day? I have a whole schedule time set, so when I come home from practice, I have a time to study, do homework, and then. And as a sophomore, what have the upperclassmen of the varsity team taught you to improve yourself? Just be disciplined and be who you are. Do you plan to continue football next year? And if so, what's something that you think you'll have to teach the underclassmen? Yeah, I continue playing football all, all four years. I want to teach underclassmen to be like respectful, like be yourself. It's high school, you can do whatever. Thank you for the As you can see, the JV football team works really hard for what they do. I'm Richard Dos Santos, and this has been Herrick's JV Football. Thank you.
Now on to girls varsity soccer with Nick Tameo and Coach Regal to talk about how the girls kept up a mostly successful season and how teamwork brought them together as well as an interview with star player Maggie Ledwith, who recently committed to Indiana University in just her junior year. Take it away, Nick. This is Herrick's Girls Soccer. These girls practice every day after school for two and a half hours. Their vigorous training has catapulted them to a successful start to the season. To learn more about the team, we spoke to the girls' soccer coach, Ms. Regal. Who are you? Uh, my name is Ms. Regal, and I have most of you for health and phys ed. Uh, how do you feel about your team's current success? I mean, I couldn't be more proud. We have a very talented group of ladies this year, and uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a great season so far. How does your team intend to keep up the success? Uh, showing up every day, working hard, and then just going to war when it's game time. So far, the girls have had a four-game winning streak that doesn't seem to be ending anytime soon. What can you do to eliminate your team's biggest weakness and continue to stay strong? I mean, a lot we try to work on at practice. Um, we'll see who it looks like we're going to be slotted to play for the first round of playoffs, which is next Friday. Um, a team, whoever it will be, is someone we've already faced two times, so we'll just have to come up with a really good game plan. How does your team manage to work together successfully? Uh, I think uh, we're really lucky because the girls are very close and they have a strong bond and that kind of chemistry, when you have it off the field, only makes things better when you're on the field. One of the most important aspects of their team is their cooperation. To learn more about their dedication, we spoke with star player Maggie Ledwith, a junior who recently got accepted to Indiana State University for her remarkable abilities in the sport. So, who are you? Um, I'm Maggie Ludwith. I play center mid, and my number is four. And why did you decide to start playing soccer? Well, honestly, when I was like three years old, my parents just put me into like those little like clinics by your house, and then I kept doing them. And when I was like in elementary school, I like joined a club team, and I just loved it, so I just kept playing. And how did you feel about the team's current record, and how you got to that? Um. Personally, I'm really proud of my team and our current record. This is our first year in the conference that we're in, which is the top conference in Nassau County. So I think we're doing really good for this being our first year. Who do you look up to that inspires you to do what you do? Um, one of my friends, Caitlin Cosme, she really inspires me. She went to Harris High School also and just graduated from playing um, soccer at Duke. What's it like getting accepted into a college in your junior year for a sport you're so passionate about? Um, it's very exciting and I'm very happy that like everything that I've like worked for has finally paid off, but it's not like over yet, you know? <laughs> and how do you keep up with school and social life while playing at such a high level of sport? Um, it's very hard. I definitely have to make some sacrifices, like missing like parties or sweet sixteens and stuff like that if I'm like away for soccer, but it's worth it. Now you live. <laughs> as you can see, the girls work really hard to achieve these goals, and we hope they continue to work just as hard. Back to you, Addison. Good luck to them, and now um, on the agenda is boys soccer. Both the varsity and JV teams haven't had great years, but there are some bright spots like the varsity goalkeeper Christian Thomas and JV striker Braden Haas. Patrick Nolan was able to talk to both of these star players. Audio Jungle. Hello, Harris. I'm your host, Alex Cabrera, and today's segments are on the JV and varsity soccer teams. Well, we're starting off today with an interview with starting goalie Christian Thomas. They have just come up on an upswing with a tie against Valley Stream Central of 2-2. Two to two. Now to Patrick Nolan with our interview. Thank you, Alex. And now I'm here with Christian Thomas, the head varsity goalie. Uh, how long have you been playing soccer? Uh, I've been playing soccer for 10 plus years. Uh, and how do, you, how do you think you've done this season? And what do you think you can improve on? Um, it's been a tough year so far as a team. Uh, I've had a strong year, had multiple, uh, many saves this year. But uh, it's been a tough year. We've been uh, battling through, but we look to finish the season strong. And how do you rank amongst other goalies in the island? 
Um, in Nassau County, I've been ranked top 10 consistently throughout the year in saves and, uh, and goals let up. And um, yeah, I think that's a very good accomplishment in my career. And uh, is this your main sport or do you play other sports? Uh, soccer is my main sport. That's my main sport I've been playing since I, I was very young. But I also play baseball and basketball. And uh, do you plan to play soccer in college? Uh, I'd like to, but I don't know any, at this point if I have any offers to play. But if I if I am able to get an offer, I'll um, I'll, I'll definitely take it. And uh, what does it take to become a goalie? Um, to be a goalie, you have to be like very confident. You have to be strong. And you have to be athletic, obviously. But you have to know your decision. Uh, have, have like very strong decision making. And once you get a uh, have a decision, uh, have a choice to make, you have to stick to it. And you have to stick with it throughout 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 the entire play and throughout the entire game. All right. Thank you very much. That was Christian Thomas, starting varsity goalie. Now back to you, Alec. Thank you, Patrick. We'll be now starting our segment for the JV soccer team with an interview with Braden Haas. The team has had a rough season so far, but they hope to do better in the future. Now, on to you, Patrick. Hello, we are with captain of the JV soccer team, Braden Haas, who is their starting striker. Um, how has your season been going this year? Uh, we've been facing some struggles this year. Um, our, we can improve on working together as a team and you know just stringing together some passes and just communicating. And uh, how long have you been playing? Um, I've been playing soccer since I was about four or five years old. And uh, do you plan to continue playing the sport? Um, yeah, I'd like to play it um, throughout high school, maybe even college. We'll have to see. And is it your main sport? Um, no, soccer is not my main sport. I also play basketball and lacrosse. And uh, what does it take to become a good striker? Um, I feel like to be a good striker, you need good footwork. You need uh, you need you need a lot of speed and uh, you need a great finish. And what are some things that you work on to become better? Um, I'd like to work on getting a little faster and I'd like to get a little more power on my shot so I can just turn and shoot. And, um, and uh, what, what are you uh, excited about for next soccer season? Um, I'm really excited about getting to play with some different boys like the varsity soccer team and um, I just can't wait for next season. It's going to be a good one. All right. That was Braden Haas, the captain of the JV soccer team. Back to you, Alex. Hey, and as we move on through the season, we hope to see them do better. And as we miss our seniors, and hope to see our freshmen do way better next season, we have to say goodbye and thanks for watching. Moving on, Austin Dar recently caught up with boys badminton coach Miss Ruizzi to shed some light onto herself and the program under her leadership. Hi guys, today we're here with Coach Reese, the head coach of the badminton team. And what has, how long have you been the coach for the badminton team? Um, I've been coaching the boys team for about four years. This is probably my fourth year. And what has this team meant to you over the years? Um, well, I played badminton when I was in high school actually, and it was a large part of my experience there. So I'm just happy to be a part of it here with an amazing group of boys and to just have the same experience with them. How do you think the atmosphere at home just affects how the players play? So much, because late this year at least we've had a lot of fans and support, and a lot of the parents come. So I don't really feel like kind of like boosts the energy and gives us a good vibe to play. So it's so much better at home than away. And how do you think you guys are going to be successful going on through the season? Um, well, I mean, right now we are the top of the conference, which is really exciting. So I think we just have to keep doing what we're doing and hope for the best. We have two more games left, so we'll see what happens. So how is the team's preparation routine crucial for how they play? Um, well, we just put on some good music and have some good vibes, and they warm up and play, really. It's kind of what we do for every game and just kind of set the mood. Good vibes and good music. Yeah. So, and how do you think the captains, how do, how do you think they show leadership to the young players? 
Um, well, they've both been really great this year so far, and they're both juniors, so we don't have any seniors on the team. But um, one is like constantly bringing ideas to me, like how we can, what we can do at practice, and how we can get better. And one is always bringing food too to the game, so both of the best right there. That's great. How do you handle playing the more challenging team? Well, we are a more challenging team, so I mean, I'm just hoping that we stay there and keep doing what we're doing. And what will winning the conference mean to the team? Um, I feel like it would just kind of be evidence that you know, hard work pays off and, you know, for all their dedication and commitment to the team over the past couple of years, like, it's nice to see the results of all of that this year, you know, so, yeah. Next, we'll take it to Thomas Zaid, who will be discussing the highly successful boys volleyball team this season. Thanks, guys. As of October 11th, the boys varsity volleyball team has a record of 11-1, and and they sit at first place in their conference, thanks to players such as Evan Leal, who plays the outside and is second in kills in the county, and hopes to chase 300 kills before the end of the season. Also, co-captain Tanu Sony, who is a libero, and the head coach, of course, Craig Weinberg. Last year, the boys' volleyball team won the conference championship and went undefeated. New starters such as Tanush Sony, as well as Treyas Dot and Tristan Suraj Bali, have slotted in and kept a similar pace even after departure of players such as Sean Richards and Anish Savarat. John Jockham is back and starting after a two-year hiatus, and two sophomore call-ups in Ryan Chen and Sarath Benkatisen show strength and the future of the program. Last year, they lost to Syosin in the first round of the playoffs, but this year, they look to go further. For more information on the volleyball team, we were able to speak with Tanush Sony about how the team is doing. Well, thanks for being with us, Tanush. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing great. So, in two years, you've won two conference championships. How has that felt, and what is it like to enjoy that kind of success? It's been amazing, like, winning almost every single game this season, going almost undefeated. It's a feeling that I feel like every team, any sports team, would want to have, and we've been unlucky enough to have that opportunity and be winning games. Sounds great. Do you believe that this team has the experience to make a deep playoff run since last season? Yeah, definitely. So we have a lot of returning varsity starters, uh, especially underclassmen such as Dylan and Devin Lee, who have been performing really well as setters. And we have, obviously, we have Evan Liao, who's been a varsity starter since freshman year. And with that deep core we have, I feel like, all right, we have a couple more years of success. Sounds great. So, Tanush, you and Gavin Lee have been co-captains throughout the mm -hmm. season. How are you able to lead the team? Yeah, so Gavin and I have a strong emphasis on like feel, fostering a family-like connection between all our teammates. So between practices, games, even like th as small things as like warm-ups, we, we try including everyone, even if they're not starters. And just through that, I feel like that's played a big part to our success. On a final note, what do you think the program is going to look like in the future? Yeah, so we have a really bright future ahead of us. We still have returning varsity starters for um, that are juniors currently that are going to play senior year, and hopefully they'll be able to have the same level of success that we've had this year and for many years to come. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time, Junior. Yeah, thank you. Too. The volleyball team looks to continue riding their success into the playoffs, and we wish them the best of luck. Thanks for that, Thomas. And adding on to that is George Clark to highlight their Dig Pink event earlier this season. So, Mr. Weinberg, how did you get involved in the Dig Pink charity event? Um, really, it all goes back to Coach Krinsky. So, Coach Krinsky set this up years ago. It was always a girls' event. Um, and she basically said she was going to try to incorporate the boys when she could. We finally found a date that worked out for both of us. And it was probably about five or six years ago where the boys got involved. Um, and this year we were lucky enough to have the JV boys and girls also partake, just the way the schedule worked out. And it's definitely a cause that's really near and dear to Coach Krinsky, and we're just happy to be along uh, for the ride with her. I know that you were selling shirts for the fundraiser. Are there any other opportunities, and also was the result satisfactory? So the result was beyond satisfactory. So we sold 350 shirts, we sold them all out before the event. Uh, that's a credit that goes to the boys and girls team. They all worked hard together, JV Varsity and everyone partaked. Um, additionally, we um, have some baskets that some of the parents donated. 
and some of the coaches did, that's another opportunity just to raise money for such an amazing cause. That's really is a great thing. Thank you. Do you think that the players performed really well this game? I do. I think we really played well today. I mean, we won this match in three against a team that fought hard the entire time. We were able to get a bunch of guys in. I really focused on the seniors today especially, trying to get seniors to play as this is going to be their last chance to partake in the Dick Pink event. So all in all, I thought we finished the game the way we needed to, and it was definitely a well-played game by our team. It truly was really good game. After this game, is there anything you think as a team you guys could improve on? Yeah, I think the one thing we fell a little short was, was finishing up these matches. So each of these sets, were um, we kind of had a nice lead, and in the end we kind of let the other team back in. So I think just finishing up, trying to put another team away, is really where we need to improve going forward. Are the players on the team as excited as everyone else is for this event? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, it's just a really nice thing. It brings the school together, a sense of community, and just for a good cause. The players really step up uh, when it comes to this. And it's not just the, the preparation, it's when it's time for the match. They really get pumped up. They feed off the crowd's energy. They feel that this is a big deal, and uh, I think it really shows. Hi, I'm here with Emmett O'Brien. He played for the Dig Pink event. Uh, he was actually on the team. Emmett, what do you have to say about your performance so far about uh, the game? Yeah, I think it went uh, a little bit well. Uh, you know, just trying to contribute uh, to the team as much as I can. Uh, really, a really good team victory. Everyone played their part. Uh, and it was nice since, you know, in front of a big crowd and, you know, for a good cause, the, the win mm -hmm. felt good. So Emmett, your team has won a lot of 3-0 games. Uh, do you think the hard work has paid off? Oh yeah, definitely. You know, um, the team has a sort of like, you know, universal mentality of how, you know, we're going out there playing our hardest and we want to win every game. So, you know, while we have those physical attributes where we have, you know, good spikers, good passers, all that, everyone's, you know, mental capability is really strong. You know, I think that's really helped us in, you know, our success this season. So, um, do you think a lot of people came out to support the Dick Pink charity event? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. The stands was a crowd of, you know, pink, basically. You know, it was, uh, no, it, it was awesome. And, you know, when you have that energy from the crowd, you know, it definitely gives you a boost that, you know, it kind of makes you feel, you know, like you're basically in a professional game with that many people. So it was really nice and it was, it was something special. So, uh, what are the strengths and weaknesses on your volleyball team? Uh, you know, like I said, our uh, mental aspect is always there. You know, that never falters. Um, you know, we have good chemistry too. We've had a lot of uh, a lot of our starters and our players. They've uh, come up since being freshmen, so they've played with each other for a while. So having you know that sort of relationship that they do have on the court is something that's you know second to none. That's something that really gives us the most success because they they know how to play with each other. Uh, weaknesses, uh, I mean, right now we only lost one game, so I can't say we have much weaknesses. You know, our season's been really successful, and, you know, whatever weaknesses we have, we make sure it doesn't, you know, snowball and become something that, you know, can hurt the team. So how does it feel to be a part of a big volleyball team for varsity? Oh, yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. I mean, it's such a, such a cool environment to be around. I mean, you know, the big jump from JV to varsity is, like, you know, insane, so... Being part of a team that's competitive and, you know, um, you know, that level is something that's really, you know, special and, you know, really cool to be a part of. Thank you, Emmett. Yeah, thank you. I'm here with uh, Shreyan Biswas from the Herricks Varsity football team. So tell me, Shreyan, you are the only freshman on this varsity team. What is it like playing with older and more experienced players? Um, the older guys are definitely a lot more stronger and more aggressive, so uh, I gotta make up for that by um, trying to match that and be just as aggressive and physical as they are. How are you going to elevate your play so that you can be prepared for this Saturday? I mean, as everyone knows, we're 0-5, so we don't got much to lose. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, now we just gotta keep on moving forward and just put it all out there for the game on Saturday and just keep on going for the rest of the season and try to just try to outwork the other teams and try to do the best we can. Do you think you have what it takes to play at this level? Yeah, I think I'm getting there. I mean, it's it's a lot harder than JV. The jump from middle school to JV to now varsity was big jumps each time. So that's just what I'm trying to prepare for, to try to be ready every single game, every single week coming in and out. Just try to be more prepared every single time. How have you transitioned from playing on a JV team to now playing at the varsity level? Um, it's been, like I said before, it's been a pretty big jump. I mean, the people are definitely much more stronger than other guys. Um, one time I had a matchup where the guy actually had a full beard, 
Uh, last week against New York Park, my matchup had a tattoo. He he did throw me around a little bit, so it's it's taken a lot of adjustment. But I'm I'm trying to get up there and try to be at the level that everyone else is at because I have a lot of experience to make up for. Great insight, George, and it's amazing that this game has become a tradition at Herricks as well. That will just about wrap it up for our coverage on fall sports. After looking at football, girls and boys soccer, badminton and boys volleyball, we can see that our teams have a lot of talent and future potential for success in the season and in the ones to come. We hope you enjoyed this Herricks Expanded Sports update. I'm Addison Gonzalez. I'm Michael Grady, and remember Herricks, this is Highlander Country.